Hello, everybody, and welcome. And uh, I'm very happy that today in this digital format of ARM, I'm able to introduce to you our Elevector Scalable AV production system, uh, which uses fully stable producer cell lines for AED. Um, as everybody in the audience is most likely very well aware of, gene therapy is experiencing an amazing hype over the last years. And when we just look at the gene therapy trials of last year, and what's depicted here are really the pure gene therapy trials, so excluding all the gene-modified cell therapies like CAR-T, for example, um, you can see that um, there's, that's an amazing number. We have had over 350 clinical trials in gene therapy. Um, more than 200 of those um, be beyond phase one, uh, more than 30 actually in phase three. And while initially most gene therapies were really targeting rare diseases, this is also changing. So what's happening now is that um, very common diseases are being tackled by gene therapy. So for example, in phase two, there's trials um, for Parkinson's disease, um, an indication that has more than um, 7 million patients worldwide, around 10 million patients worldwide, or even a phase three, phase three trials for hemophilia. Again, a not rare indication where a big number of um, gene therapy vehicles is actually needed. And speaking of gene therapy vehicles, the most widely and nearly exclusively used vehicle for in vivo gene therapies is actually um, AAV vectors, adeno-associated viral vectors. And there's um, a good number of reasons for that. So first of all, AAV itself is not pathogenic, which helps improving the safety of the viral vector. In addition, it's replication defective. So in the absence of a helper virus, it cannot replicate, which further improves the safety of this viral vector. Then it remains primarily, primarily episomal, meaning it hardly ever integrates into the chromosomes avoiding any potential oncogenic gene activations, for example. Um, furthermore, it's small and very stable, which of course helps with the downstream processing, of course helps with um, formulation, storing, transporting, also very important when you think about distributing these therapies. And finally, at, but not least of all, uh, the AV vectors or AV comes in numerous serotypes, meaning the capsid surfaces are different, allowing to um, target speci specific tissues. So you can adapt the, the, um, your vector to the tissue you actually need to target with your therapy. Um, however, like other viral vectors, it is very complicated and complex to make these vectors. To assemble them, you really you need producer cells. And when we look at the, the therapies that are currently commercially available in the market, um, the production system for these is really well suited for rare diseases, but has its problems when you have to um, accommodate um, larger indications. So what's happening is adherently growing cells are being used as the, the production platform and these have to be modified um, by triple transfection, bringing in all the different components of the AV vector. And um, this is really done as a manual process and with the adherently growing cells, there's really no way um, doing that as a true scale-up, it can be scaled out, but not scaled up. And um, this is obviously very, very limited. And just to give you an idea, uh, for a phase one, two clinical trial for hemophilia, for example, it required a production uh, a campaign of, of between half a year and a year, employing more than 400 cell stack tens, um, just to get the viral vectors for six patients for that trial. So obviously this cannot be the production system 
when we move to um, common indications. And um, as you can imagine, there's also, it's not just the scalability, but it's also lack of robustness in the process and also cost, just starting with, with cost for, for GMP grade uh, plasma DNA. So other solutions are required. There's a lot going on, starting with um, clever devices that help scaling out the adherent cell culture, moving to suspension cells and bioreactors. And this is also the area where we as CEVEC are active. And we took a different approach. We felt it would be fantastic if we could actually make AAV production as simple as antibody production. And towards that goal, what we set out to do and did successfully is actually to develop a true stable system where all the components are integrated into one producer cell. Um, and that can then, without any need of plasma transfection or helper virus, like some other systems require them, the baculovirus system, for example, can then be used just to scale up in bioreactors for uh, uh, production. And of course, I mentioned before, we have different serotypes and of course you have different therapeutic genes depending on the disease you're targeting. So to keep the system versatile, we established a starting cell line or alpha cell line that carries all the components that are required to make AV but it's lacking the gene of interest and the serotype specific capsid. So for every specific producer cell line we generate, we start with the alpha cell, we introduce then by stable transfection and selection or also alternatively by lentiviral transduction, the gene of interest and the serotype specific capsid to give rise to the final producer cell line that like any other producer cell line can then be um, GMP bound, characterized and um, ex expanded to production volume. And we then induce AV production um, in, in the system. And to give you an idea how it works, we've been doing different serotypes and different things of interest in the meantime, since we officially launched this Elevector platform in, in the beginning of the year. But um, I'm showing you an example of our proof of concept cells where we used AV8 as a serotype and um, just GFP as a gene of interest. And this is just data from a polyclonal population of producer cells showing you very nice and reproducible um, growth data already in shake flasks and even more reproducible in a stir tank um, mini bioreactor, the M15 system. And when you look at a V production upon induction, what we saw and what we reproducibly see is that um, we do already get nice titers in the, in the 10 to the 12 range um, from shake flask, but these are increased about tenfold in an M15 system. And as I mentioned, this is the polyclonal population. Of course, what you're doing is you go for single cell clones. So after single cell cloning, when we repeat the experiment, what we see is um, that um, the um, AV production rate goes further up by about a factor of 10. And what we also found and what we're quite happy to see is um, that the system is nicely scalable. So just from transferring from the 15 mil ember to the 10 liter bioreactor, we see very reproducible growth patterns of the cells. And we also much more importantly, see reproducible viral titers. Uh, we have very recently done um, upscaling to 50 liters. And I'm showing you the data on, on, on this next slide. So again, the growth data on the left-hand panel. And um, as you can see, um, the cells grew even better in the 50 liter bioreactor. We're not fully sure why that's the case, but of course it's a very uh, a pleasant result. And when we compare AV production, and again, we looked at titers starting in this particular experiment, two days, 
after induction, um, up to day five after induction. And what you see very uh, clearly is that um, the yields are very comparable and that um, on day five, the 50 liter bioreactor even slightly exceeds um, the, the 10 liter bioreactor. We're now in the process of doing the, the 200 liter upscaling um, experiment and I can't wait to see the data. So of course, we've also, we're also analyzing the, the quality of the AV particles we're generating. And um, this is showing you some of the data starting from uh, doing dry and pictures of the AV uh, particles produced um, stably uh, or from stable producer cell lines, uh, where you also very nicely see the, the full particles to the actual capsid composition. And here, um, there sometimes the ratio of the three different capsid proteins, CP1 to 3, can be an issue. What we see is we see the expected ratio of 1 to 1 to 10, and um, the pattern looks exactly identical from for stable AV from a single cell clone in comparison to transient uh, AV produced by transient transfection. And we've also done um, infectivity assays with these AVs on one hand uh, produced by transient transfection, on the other hand from a stable single cell clone. And again, the data we see here within the, within the, the, the range you get in these, this kind of assay is very much comparable. So, of course, the advantage of using a stable cell line versus a transient system is um, that you can now use all the process parameters and, and, and processes that are, have been developed for other stable cell lines, like antibody producing cell lines, for example. And one thing we've done is implemented a perfusion technology. So, in an, an ATF perfusion process, uh, what we see in comparison to a, a batch culture and a shape blast is that we can increase the initial cell numbers very nicely. So um, in, in this particular experiment, we increased cell numbers to 20 million cells per mil before induction, whereas in the, in the shape flask, um, we induced at um, 5 million cells per mil. And um, we then let the process continue, continued the perfusion. And what we saw uh, very convincingly is that um, the cells keep producing AV and it accumulates also in the bioreactor. So at four days after induction, we had 20-fold um, higher titers in the ATF bioreactor as compared to the batch control. And um, this is now up obviously a, a, a process that we will um, keep uh, improving and, and, and optimizing because this is now really a means to come up with very good titers in a scalable system where you can, I mean, we're doing 200 liters at the moment, but there's no reason you can't go to a thousand liters and easily beyond. So what we have successfully done is we have developed, and to my knowledge, it's still the only truly stable AV production platform where we have stable producer cell lines that uh, do not need any transient transfection, that do not need any help virus for production. Um, all the components are stably integrated into the cell line. Uh, scale up um, works very nicely and smoothly from 15 mil to 50 liter bioreactors. And we've seen significant yield, significant yield increase via um, employing a perfusion process. And of course, why am I telling you all this? Um, we as CEVEC are really dedicated to technology development. So what our business really is, is to work with partners from pharma and biotech to make that platform available to them to help you or help our partners to generate producer cells for their specific therapeutic AV and also to implement and, and develop the processes to then make the AV. So thanks a lot for 
watching the talk. If you have any questions, I think there will be, there should be a chat box. Feel free to, to drop your question there and I'd be very happy to get in touch with you. Thank you very much.